Welcome to Michaela's Corner. Guys, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday so far or whatever day you're watching this. I hope you're doing well and I hope you guys are ready to do another week on thankfulness because guys, this week we've made it. It's here. It is Thanksgiving week. In just a couple days, we're going to be sitting around our tables with our family and we're going to be having Thanksgiving. I know things might look a little different this year, but when things are going wrong and we find things to be thankful for, sometimes that can be even so much more meaningful. Finding thankfulness in times that are hard. You know what I mean? I hope you guys have that this week. Well, we've talked about all sorts of stuff on thankfulness this week, and this week we are talking about thankfulness again. Shocking. I know. But we're talking about this theme of thankfulness again. And this week we have a book that we're gonna read, but beforehand I'm gonna talk to you guys about a verse talking about giving thanks to the Lord for He is good, His love endures forever. That's gonna be our focus of our Bible time today. And then we're gonna wrap it up with a fun book on giving thanks. Now, I've read this book before, so if you've seen it or you've heard it, I hope you guys just enjoy it. Don't wanna to give too much away because it's pretty great, so I'll leave it for Bible time. But we have that for Bible time, and then for our craft today, we are going to do a watercolor painting using markers and water, or watercolor, to create our very own turkeys. So I thought that would be fun, and I hope that you guys enjoy all of it. So, let's jump in. But, you guys, I'm thinking this doesn't look very fall, and it's Thanksgiving. We gotta spice this up a bit. So, for Bible time, let's change up our location. You guys ready? Better. Welcome to my fall decorations. Ellen and I set this up every fall and every fall it's a little different but we've got these fun decorations and I thought what better way to celebrate our actual week of Thanksgiving than with some fall. We've got a nice beautiful pumpkin here. Isn't this like the most picturesque pumpkin you've ever seen? Ellen picked it out and I like can't think of a better looking pumpkin. It's just so pumpkin-y, you know? Well, guys, welcome to Bible time. We are talking about thankfulness again. And it is our final week leading up to Thanksgiving. In just a couple days, you're gonna be celebrating, sitting around the table with your family, whoever you're at home with, and you're gonna be celebrating Thanksgiving and all the wonderful things you're thankful for. So, leading up to this week as a refresher, we've talked about being thankful for things that you can't see. Does anybody remember what the example was that I gave? That's right, the Trinity. The Trinity, the three in one, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three different, but one. And you can't see them, we can't see God, and we can't see Jesus, and we can't see the Holy Spirit. Therefore, thankful for things we can't see. In our second week, we talked about the five kernels of thankfulness. We have thankful to God for his love. We have thankful to God that he provides all our needs. We have thankful to God for the friendships he's given us thankful to God for all the people who love us in our lives, and thankful to God that he answers our prayers. And then last week, we talked about being thankful for something in more ways than one. We had a couple objects coming out of a cornucopia, and every time we would look at an object, we would think, what am I thankful for when I look at this? When I see it, what does it remind me of something that I'm thankful for? And we realize that if we think hard enough and we get kind of creative in our minds, there's so many reasons to be thankful for this one thing, more than one. We looked at, for example, we looked at a cat and it was a stuffed animal, so I thought, thankful for toys. But then I thought, thankful for cats. And then we went even further and we're just thankful for animals in general. And so those are just some fun ways to be thankful as we lead up to Thanksgiving. And so this week, we're talking about Thanksgiving. We're talking about thankfulness again, but we're gonna do it a little different. Today, I have a book for us to read and we read this book way back at the beginning of Michaela's Corner. So it's been several months now since we've read it. And it's called, God Gave Us Thankful Hearts. And I thought, what better book for us to read this week, leading up to Thanksgiving, than talking about having a thankful heart. But before we read the book, I wanted to share one verse with you guys from the Bible talking about thankfulness. And it goes like this. It's in the book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse one. And it goes like this. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Now, at the preschool that I used to work with, and some of you who are watching might be going to our preschool right now or have been, there's a song that we used to sing when we would eat our snack. Before we would eat our snack, we would sing this song and 
we had a bunch of prayers that were written out in song form. And this one always, this verse reminds me of one of the songs. And it goes like this. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He cares for us like he said he would. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Amen. That's a little silly one. It's a little different, but the beginning is give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And it's such a great reminder. So when we see this verse, it makes me think of two things. The first part is give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And how true is that? God is so good. He's good to us. He provides for us. He cares for us. He loves us. And he gives us everything that we have is all because of God. And we should be thankful that God is good. He's given us so many things. We've talked about it over these last couple weeks, and I'm sure you could still come up with more things to be thankful for because God is good to us, and he gives us such wonderful things to be thankful for. And the second part of the verse says, for his love endures forever. Forever! Forever and ever and ever and ever! Before we were born, after we die. God will love us forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Isn't that amazing? His love endures forever. And isn't that something to be thankful for? I know we've talked about it a lot, that God's love for you will never change. He will love you no matter what, forever. There's nothing you can do that will change God's love for you. And how great is that? What a peace that gives us and something to be thankful for. Because we know that no matter what, we don't have to strive hard for God to love us. We don't have to work and do all these extra things. But also when we mess up, we don't have to be afraid thinking that God isn't gonna love us anymore because God loves us even when we mess up. Just like your moms and dads, God will love you no matter what. And God's love endures forever. So we can be thankful that God is good and his love endures forever. What an amazing verse. Mwah! Well, without further ado, let me read you our book, God Gave Us Thankful Hearts. God Gave Us Thankful Hearts by Lisa Ton Bergeron and art by David Holm. Well, there you are, little pup, mom said. Why are you looking so glum? I don't know, he mumbled. I'm just sad. How can you be sad on such a beautiful day? <sighs> because the leaves are changing colors and soon it will be winter. I like spring and summer and fall when I can play with my friends. Hibernating season is boring. You'll still have some friends about come winter. And there's a reason for us to be thankful in every season, little pup. We need winter to let the land and some of our friends have a rest. Otherwise, we wouldn't get spring. But everyone is going to be hibernating, he grumbled. The chipmunks and the bears, the badgers and the bats, even the raccoons and beavers. And squirrels won't come out on much. What about skunks or bees? You won't see much of them either, Mama said. Little pup smiled. <laughs> I guess I am thankful about that. We can be thankful for how God paints our forest every autumn, Mama said. Yeah, but I'm not thankful for poison ivy, Little Pup said, remembering that time he rolled in a patch by accident. It makes you so itchy. True, but you can be thankful you know how to avoid it now, right? Mm, I guess. Oh, and I'm not thankful when my pack buddies get too ramonictious. Ramunc ramunctious with me, Little Pup said. Rambunctious, you mean? Yeah, that. Mama giggled. You can be thankful you have friends who will be around all winter, right? They will keep you from being lonely. Hmm, maybe. The trick to having a thankful heart, Mama said, is thinking about the things that make us happy, rather than the things that don't. Hmm, like what? Well, that's easy. I'm thankful for you, she said, squeezing him tight. Being your mama has made me one of the happiest mamas in the whole wide world. And you, little pup, what makes you thankful? Hmm, well, you and Papa, of course, he said. I'm thankful for fishing. I'm thankful for fishing too, Papa said. But God gave us thankful hearts so we could praise him, even when we don't catch fish. What? That's crazy talk, little pup said. It's not, Papa said with a smile. We can be thankful for this last bit of autumn and time together beside this beautiful river, even if we don't catch fish. I'm thankful we go to the Harvest Festival every year, Little Pup said, but I didn't like it when we got lost in the corn maze. Me either, Mama said, 
But we found our way through, right? We can be thankful for how God shows us the way, even when it seems a little scary. Yeah, and that we're not alone in those times, little pup said. Yes, now you're getting the hang of having a thankful heart. My heart is thankful for apples! Mmm, Mama said, and hot apple pie. Ooh, yes, and caramel apples, Papa said, or baked apples with ice cream. I'm thankful for the freedom to wander and explore, Mama said, and for this pretty country we live in. Me too, Little Pup said. You know what I'm thankful for the mostest, Little Pup said? Dessert! And for dinner before it, Mama said, lifting a brow. Something healthy in our bellies before all this sugar. I'm thankful for our cozy, warm home, Papa said, especially as winter draws near. Little Pup had to admit he was really sleepy as he yawned and climbed the stairs towards bed. He felt so thankful he was with his mom and Papa inside and not out in the damp forest or cold, wet snow. I'm glad I don't feel sad anymore, Little Pup said. I'm glad God gave me a thankful heart. Us too, Little Pup, Mama said. We all have so much to be thankful for. Little Pup drifted off to sleep with a smile on his face, thanking God for his friends and family, and for fishing, and for corn mazes, and for apples, and for changing seasons, even for the end of fall. The end. I hope you enjoyed that book. I thought it was really sweet and it's a good reminder that there's so many things to be thankful for. By just looking around, there's so many things to be thankful for. But above all, he's given us our friends, our family, and he loves you. You can always hold on to that. That even when life is hard and you can't think of anything to be thankful for and everything's going wrong, remember that God loves you. And that's the best thing of all. And with that, you guys, let's head on to our craft. Welcome to craft time. Today we are going to be making our very own Thanksgiving turkey using a coffee filter, a clothespin, some watercolors, some markers, and some water. Now, you can if you don't have watercolors, that's okay. You can use markers instead. But if you have watercolor, you can do that too. Or you can do both. And I'll show you what I mean when we get there. But also, you're going to want to have some paper towels on the side, and I've got mine here. Let's get started. Perfect. To get started, we're gonna start with one coffee filter, just one, and then I've got my watercolors here, and then I've got markers and water. Now I'm choosing orange, red, yellow, and brown because these are kind of the colors that you usually see used for turkeys. You can make your turkey however you want. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our coffee filter, and we're gonna kind of flatten it down a little bit, and then fold it in half like this. Now that we've got it folded in half, this is gonna represent the feathers on our turkey. So in the end, when we grab our um, clothespin, which I'll show you what we're gonna do with these later, you're gonna stick it on like this, and he's gonna be the turkey, the body, and then this is gonna be the feathers. So we have to make our feathers colorful. Now, here's how we would do it with markers. You would take your marker and you would color straight onto this coffee filter, like such. And see how I'm not fully coloring it all the way in? See how there's still some lines in between? That's okay because next I'm gonna add a different color next to it. We'll do some red. Let's do some orange. And then we gotta get that yellow in there. These are tight lids. Okay, so I'm just gonna color this section for now to show you what I mean. Here I've got the colors, and see again how I didn't go all the way to the edge because this is where the water is gonna come in handy. It's, we're gonna paint water on top and watch the colors blend together. Now I had this kind of fun tool, so I was curious what it would look like. This is a little dropper. If you have one of these at home, you might have them in your craft supplies or your moms and dads might use them for medicine and you could ask permission to use them. But I thought we'd try to see what that looks like. So you squeeze the top and then you let go and it sucks water inside. There you go, see how it's inside there? Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, all right, here we go. I'm gonna do one drop. Ah, and see how it starts to blend there? Beep. Ooh, this is fun, I like the dropper. 
I've usually only painted on top before. I haven't done drops. I'll lift it. It gets a little wet when it's um, when you put the water on. It starts to this gets pretty soaked. So I'm gonna hold it up carefully. But you see how the colors are starting to spread together? Ooh, look at this part. This the brown went really far. So if you don't have a dropper though, you can absolutely use a paintbrush. So then I'm just gonna dip it in here and then I'm gonna paint my water on top. Now if the colors don't go all the way to the edge, you can always add more color on afterwards. Let's see what you can do first with just the water. Now, I'm gonna show you what to do with watercolor. Now it's basically the same thing. You're just gonna color on top of this with your watercolor. So I'm gonna get some orange in here. You could do a combo and you could add orange you could color in the missing spots with your watercolors over the markers. You could do both. Let's see. Mm, the markers is definitely a bolder color. This is kind of an experiment on which one is the best. Hmm, I like it. Let's do, ooh, let's get some brown in here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, okay, so what I'm learning is, is if we want a softer, more subtle tone, the watercolors is the way to go. But if you want it to be really bold and bright and strong, then we're gonna use the markers. And I am a huge fan of this marker. Look at that orange at the bottom. Isn't that so pretty? Look at that. It kind of makes it light in the middle and then it fades to darker. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna finish coloring this in and then we'll add the water on top. Okay, now I've got my colors on and I'm gonna start adding the water again. I really like this effect of the dropper, so I'm gonna do this a couple times. And then I'll cover the rest with the paintbrush. Ooh, did you see that? That was cool. Let's do one up here. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, let's get the paintbrush in here. Paint some of these around. Oh, look at that. What colors did you guys choose at home? Did you stick with the kind of traditional Thanksgiving colors of orange and, and browns and reds and yellows or did you choose something different? I'm curious to know. I'm digging this dropper because you can, you know what, if you don't have a dropper, you can just get your paintbrush. You can get this um, really wet and don't tap it on the side, just dunk it in and then you hold it over and then you can just tap on it and then it drops little droplets on. So you could try that instead of a dropper. Oh my goodness, look at this. I'm gonna lift up the whole, or I'm gonna move the water first. I'm gonna lift up the whole thing because it's pretty wet now, but look at that. That's really pretty. Okay, so we've got one down. I'm gonna take my paper towel now. Whoops. I'm gonna grab one from over here. Beep, beep, beep. Now, you can let this fully dry, just leave it here and let it sit until it's totally dry. But I wanna show you the next part. So I'm gonna pat it down with a paper towel to get the extra water off. This actually might leave kind of a cool design on top of the paper towel. We'll find out in a second when I lift it up. I wanna pat it nice and dry, or at least close to dry, you know? It'll still be damp, but it'll take away the extra water. Ooh, look at that, that's kinda of cool. Ooh, look at the design of my paper towel. That can be art in and of itself. Okay, I'm gonna set that to the side. Now it's still kind of wet, but at least now I can pick it up and it's not dripping. Guys, look at that, it's so cool. Okay, now we're ready for our clothespin. So I've got my clothespin here and we're gonna decorate these um, by drawing the turkey on here. And so how you wanna decide where the head goes is the part that clips and opens, like this part here, is the top of the head and the part that is open like this that you pinch together is the bottom. So my clothespins have like a plasticky film on them so my marker doesn't stick very well but I'm still gonna show you anyways what it'll look like and then hopefully it'll dry. If I touch it right away it'll smear. But basically you're gonna draw two little dots for eyes and a triangle for his beak. See his little eyes, so cute. And I'm gonna color in that beak orange. It doesn't show up very strong but I'm gonna give him a little bit of color in there. Now, if you're feeling extra fancy, you could use paint on this, but you could also color the whole thing. You could paint the whole thing like a darker brown and then paint the eyes and the beak on top. But for this, I'm just gonna leave him plain since he's already brown. But you can decorate yours however you want. You could even add like glitter or whatever you wanna do. It's your turkey. 
So when you're ready, we've got our feathers here and we've got our turkey body. Now, all you have to do is pinch it open and then put his head on. Ta-da! And look at that, we've got our ruffly turkey and he's got his feathers. Now, when he's fully dry, and he's not quite dry yet, here, I'll get a different one to show you. Before you put the clothespin on, you could crinkle it up to make it look like it's more of like feathers. So I've got my, if I made another one, it would be like this, and then you could like maybe crinkle it up a little bit and like fold it up, I don't know. And then you open it up and it's got more of a texture to it than just the it being flat. So you just crumple it up and then let's use this guy again. Ta-da! Now he's got like very crunchy feathers. That's kind of cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this craft. I hope you enjoyed this part. This was my favorite part. I mean, you could do this with any colors. You could do it totally open as well. I wonder, since we folded it in half. Ooh, look at that. Very cool. Huh. Well, anyway, I hope you guys liked it. I had a lot of fun. I loved this part, especially doing the dropping on top. You know what? I'm feeling so inspired. I'm gonna make another one. Hang tight. Voila! I wanted to do one more just because I loved it so much, but this time I chose some pretty blues and purples. Like I said, your turkey can be whatever colors you want, but I just wanted to try it one more time. Let's see if we can get some cool designs. I did just stripes this time, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna do some dropping. Oop. Oop. Ooh, I'm already loving these colors. Ooh, do you guys see? It's starting to, oh, ah, I love it. Oh my goodness. Do I get excited about crafts? You know I do. This girl loves her crafts. Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water on the parts that didn't get touched. Guys, I just love how the water just like, it spreads so it's like really light in the middle and then it just, ah, I love it. I have to get in close. How am I gonna do this? I'll just touch it. It's wet, but that's okay. Look at these colors. I hope you guys really enjoy this. I mean, just this part alone, I love. But then turning it into a turkey, um, so cute. But I hope you guys enjoy this craft. I hope you have fun making whatever kind of feathers you choose for your crazy turkey. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And with that, let's wrap up our day. Thank you so much for joining me this week, you guys. I hope you enjoyed our lesson on giving thanks to the Lord for he is good. I hope you enjoyed the book. I hope you guys had so much fun with the craft. And guys, as always, I just hope you're doing well. I miss you guys, especially those of you at Lakeside. I miss seeing you each Sunday running around the church, especially now when we're coming up on Thanksgiving. It's kind of a bummer that we can't see you at church, but guys, it's okay. We will eventually be able to see each other in church again. And until then, hey, you guys can check me out here on Michaela's Corner. And for those of you who don't go to Lakeside, just know that I love you just as much. I'm praying for each and every one of you. Even though we've never met, I feel like you're right here in my room with me, all of you. And it's just so great to celebrate with you guys. And so with that, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Remember that no matter what, you can always be thankful that God loves you and that that will never change because God is good and his love endures forever. I love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week. Bye.